He possessed a trait that would forever mark him as unique. There was no better shot in Fentress County than Alvin York. He could hit a crow at 200 yards, and from 50, he could shoot the eye out of a turkey. And this ability gave him an advantage one misty morning during World War I. For half a day, the 20th century and its modern war were captives of a simple foot soldier. Alone, Alvin York silenced 35 machine guns and took 132 prisoners from France's Argonne Forest. He returned to a hero's welcome and offers that would make him a rich man. But Alvin York didn't want to glorify war. He, he felt bad uh, killing. See, he didn't believe in killing. And he, he, just, he just said something had to be done at that time. And he just, when he saw his buddies, it, it knocked out his whole company, all but about three or four men. And when he saw his buddies falling, see, and killing all of them, uh, he said he knowed he had to do something. All Alvin York wanted to do was to come home to the simple life he knew and to live it according to his Christian code. But as much as he wanted to forget the violence of war, his fame and friendliness made it impossible. They were a stranger. Ever since I can remember it when I was a kid, there's, there's hardly ever a day fail but what there was somebody here stopping, taking pictures, and, and wanting to wanting meet, meet Daddy. He'd invite them in here if there was six, seven, or seven, or eight. He'd invite them in here for lunch. He had returned to the lifestyle of his fathers, full of simple pleasures and hard work. But the 20th century finally caught up with him. In 1940, Alvin York finally permitted a movie to be made to inspire patriotism on the eve of World War II. He understood dying for his country, but not paying its taxes. With interest, Alvin York ended up owing the government $23,000 more than he ever made on the picture. And any money he did get was spent on his fellow East Tennesseans. At his own expense, he started a school to educate the mountain children and a program to improve the poor Fentress County roads. But as much as Alvin York tried to overshadow his acts of heroism with simple deeds of kindness, he would always remember that day in the fall of 1918. We was on the point of the Granville Mountain up here on top of the cliff, right at daybreak and looking down through the valley here and it was foggy kind of that morning and uh, he told me, he said that uh, reminded him of the Argonne Forest. He said it wasn't him, you know, it was uh, somebody hiring him that helped him do what he done. Alvin York, spirit of generosity still lives today. After his wife of 45 years died last fall, this old home place where all seven of the York children grew up was given back to the state at his request. In spite of all his accomplishments, he never considered himself any different from any of the rest of us. Perhaps that was his greatest strength and why Alvin C. York of Pall Mall, Tennessee is a symbol of the hero that is in us all. <laughs>